again. Um, this video I'm just going to show some of the helmets I have. So I'll begin with this one because this I guess is the nicest one. Well, as far as preservation goes anyway. So this is a helmet made by Quist. And let's first of all just show it off. It's a late war, no decal helmet. And um, it's painted in slate grey or schiefer grau and it was made at some time in 1943, probably late 1943. So you can see the rough texture of paint here and some remnants of a whitewash. So I did see the front even though it was made in mid to late 1944 because you can see remnants here and also around here. Now if we take a look at the liner, you can see it is in very nice condition because this helmet wasn't worn a lot. And you can also see the chin strap, which is not the one that's original to the helmet, but it's an original, um, almost, or well, probably unissued one, which is also late war because it is marked with the Reisbetriebsnummer. And uh, yeah, the liner is dated 1944, and you can see the size stamp here which is 57 and it is in very nice condition still really really very nice to touch <laughs> and um, so yeah, let's also have a look at the marking on the chin strap hmm. sort of phone yeah as you can see here there's the nice trips number uh, I actually found this one um, with an identical one of these uh, chin straps on a tornister dated 1940. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it fits the condition quite well. Now let's also have a look at the marking inside this helmet. There we are Q64, so it's made by Quist in Esslingen in shell size 64 and the lot number is DN522 so it's sometime in 1944 and um, as for other things I can't really show um, the markings on the inside of the leather or the dome stamp because it is very faint I have a hard time seeing it in person even <laughs> oh, I can see something <laughs> but, uh, it is there, so there's an oval dome stamp and um, yeah, just a little close-up of the liner again. And, well, the inside in general, nice dark grey paint. And the entire helmet. This, by the way, is a chip in the paint. This is a layer beneath the uh, slate grey and it's actually very smooth so yeah that's that helmet and now let's continue this one so this is a m42 as you can see by the not rolled over edge and the stamped air vent and um, yeah this one is made by Eisenhüttenwerke Tale and it has a 1943 dated liner, but it was probably made in, well, the helmet was made in 1944. It also has a very nice chin strap. The leather is still really, really nice. And um, this one is marked with um, Reichsbetriebsnummer 0039002004. And let's also give you some close-ups of, of the entire helmet. You can see a little dent here from the stamping process. Well, it's late war, so the quality isn't very good. It's also painted in slate grey. And uh, yeah, all in all, it's in very nice condition. And. Uh, Here's the marking, CKL62, so after 1943 um, ET, as it was formerly marked, well, Eisenhüttenwerke Thale, changed to CKL, and the lot number is 
1.60 with a misstamped number at the end. So you can see it right there. And also a close up of the liner again. Split pins, everything still in place. Size 55 liner because it's a 62 size shell. And the drawstring, which is also original, as is the drawstring on the other helmet. And um, yeah, that's that one. And now let's continue with this one. This is a special one. It might even be the last of its kind to survive, because I have not seen one in this configuration. Well, not even in a museum, so probably the last of its kind. So this is an M42 again, but as you can see by the inscription, it's special because it says Civil Fire Service and Feuerwehr beneath. And that was because after the war, the British in particular wanted to um, democratize and decentralize the, um, well, especially the fire brigades. So they formed new ones. Uh, which were on a regional basis, so yeah, one town had their own fire brigade instead of how it was in the Third Reich where it was organized by the Ordnungspolizei after I think 1938 and it was very centralized so this helmet used to be a double decal Polizei helmet here would have been the party shield and um, as you can see, it's been denazified post-war. And they added this inscription. And also let's look at the inside. This is a helmet which was made by the Emilierwake Fulda. And um, it's in shell size 64. And resin size 56, I hope you can see it. And uh, this is a pigskin liner. And the EF markings are always pretty terrible so you can't really see it here but this helmet is painted in feldgrau instead of slate grey like the other two and let's get a bit closer now so here's a few more looks at this helmet these decals were applied at the factory and aren't very straight as you can see it's pretty crooked this helmet used to be painted over, so there's some remains of it, but that's also why this inscription survived. And um, yeah, you can see the lot number stamping here, 1593, uh, and the 3 stamped backwards. And the EF factory marking here. The chin strap also has a marking here, but it's I can't make it out. It's too faint. Again with an original drawstring and liner. So some paint remains on the chin strap, liner and the shell. But it's a 1943 dated B&C Litzmannstadt liner. So made by forced labor, like most of the components probably. But it's just a pretty obvious example. So yeah. On to the last helmet I want to show you today, which is this one, and I got this from well, someone I know for free, which is very nice, and this is a so-called Luftwaffenfelddivision camo helmet, because this used to be a double decal Luftwaffe helmet, but <coughs> it... Um, was repainted as you can see in a sort of field grey and um, they also mixed some wood chips into the paint and then it was probably also painted in a tan color but you can still see the Luftwaffe paint, the Luftwaffe decal and the tricolor beneath the paint and also the factory paint is visible on the inside and they also marked the shell size here with an ink stamp Let's show you some close ups. You can quite clearly see the outline of the national decal here. So the um, black, white, and red would have been here. 
and um, yeah, you can see it showing through the paint. Then the Luftwaffe Eagle is here. It focuses. There we are. You can mostly see the swastika there, and um, the rest of the eagle. See the wing there, and the other wing here. And well, the eagle would be there. And um, yes, a close-up of the wood chips. See here, these. And um, also the air vent is filled with paint here, which is pretty interesting. And you can also see the original factory paint here on the rim where the felt coal came off. And again the inside with the lot number 937 and the shell size marking and there's a name here. It would have been EF62, but it's covered by rust. I added the liner band myself, just so you know, with the split pins. But um, yeah, that's that. I just wanted to show you my current amount of original helmets, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, leave a like, subscribe, and all that. And um, yeah, thank you for. <laughs> watching. So yeah, that's the Tower of Helmets now. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, see you next time.